Hey everyone, Mr. McIntosh here, and OpenCore Legacy Patcher 0.4.9 update was just released. There was a big issue with the macOS Monterey 12.5 update that caused issues if you have a Mac with a NVIDIA Kepler-based GPU. I'm going to go over all the information that you're going to need to know before you make the update, but I'm also going to show a live demo that if you did update to 12.5 and you have issues, I'm going to show you how to get out of those. Plus, I'm going to talk about Ventura support and macOS Big Sur 11.6.8. You're going to want to stick around. We got a lot to cover. Let's jump in and get started. Right off the bat, let's talk about the delay in getting out this video. As you can see, 0.4.9 came out five days ago. Normally, when an update to macOS Monterey like 12.5 or macOS Big Sur 11.6.8 comes out, I cover them in a video to tell you about all the changes and features. Then I swing right back to talking about OpenCore Legacy Patcher and if there's any issues that you want to keep an eye out for. Now, last week when all this happened, I was on vacation. So I finally got a little bit of break. It was nice to be able to take some time away but now that i'm back we got to start talking about all these updates and open core legacy patcher now one of the biggest problems with this 12.5 update is that in late in the beta releases it caused a problem with the kepler gpu acceleration graphics packages and it was caught by a user on the mac rumors forum and they posted about it and say hey i have a problem with this update there's something wrong with the patches after i install 12.5 and that was not known until really late in the update and then i talked to mccola and he put together this nice warning on the page that talks about the issue and i want to talk about what we need to do in the future before we update so we don't get into trouble when we talk about updating to the latest versions of the OS, usually there's no problems. There's been a long consistency through macOS Monterey and Big Sur without any issues. But here we are, Apple changed something in the update that caused problems with the acceleration packages that help with graphics acceleration, older Macs. What we need to think about is what we need to do first before we do the updates. Normally I would say, just go to there and update, and then you can go back to your application and update to 0.4.9 automatically, and then you're all set, right? Well, I think we need to change that. And what I mean by that is before you make the update, for example, in the future, when 12.6 comes out or 11.6.9, go to the Open Core Legacy Patcher page, the latest releases, go to, go to the GitHub here, click on releases, and this is where you're going to see a warning if there's a problem that has been reported. And I think this is the best way to do it, because if you would have came here real quick and just take a quick peek, if there's a latest release or if there's an issue, you would have known, wait a minute, I've got one of these MacBook Pros or one of these iMacs with that GPU. I better hold off and stay on 12.4 before I make the update. Now, again, this is rare. All these updates have happened and there hasn't been any problems, but this just goes to show that Apple could change something on the fly that causes issues. Now, the developers are taking a look at this issue now to see if they can fix it, and it might be able to be fixed in a later release. But for now, if you made that jump, you're going to have some problems. And if you stayed on 12.4, your Mac is going to be running fine. But now that we've got a plan for the future, check the page first. If you see something like this, hold off. If you don't see a release for a couple days, then usually everything's okay. And then you can keep an eye out for a video that I put out where I talk about if I find any issues. But check this page first. It only takes a second. And if you don't see any big issues, usually you're okay to update. Now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about the main issue for 0.4.9 and macOS Monterey 12.5 and the Kepler GPU issue. First of all, it only affects if you have one of the Macs in this list. So if you have a 2011 MacBook Pro, for example, you are not going to have the issue and you're fine. If you've got a 9,1 or a 2013 10,1 or a 2014 11,3, you better hold off and stay on 12.4. If you don't understand these, all you need to do is go to everymac.com. There's a really nice list here and you can type the device identifier here. A 9,1 is a MacBook Pro 15 inch from mid 2012. So if we click on this, we can see that that is the identifier here. And if we scroll down here, we can see, yep, NVIDIA GeForce. 650M. So this is affected. So the other devices that are affected here, for example, if you have an iMac 13 comma, and you have a dedicated NVIDIA Kepler GPU, also affected models are if you have a Mac iMac 11 comma or a 12 comma, and you upgraded your GPU to a Kepler. 
or if you have a Mac Pro that you upgraded to Kepler. So now that you know this, and maybe you've waited already, and you see your Mac in here, hold off on 12.4. Just stay on it. Wait for updates to see if the developers figure out a fix and maybe they'll come out with a 0.4.10 or a patch in the future to be able to fix that. And once they do, you can update and then update Open Core Legacy Patcher and then your acceleration should work just fine. But uh, we don't know that for sure. So they're looking at that and to see if they can resolve that now. And I will update you if we can find if the developers do find an issue. But let's say that you updated your Mac because you didn't know about the issue. And I can't blame you or no one blames you for updating because, again, we've had a good track record. So let's pull up our demonstration unit here today, which is 11,3 MacBook Pro. So as you can see, I updated this machine because I wanted to show you what would happen if, if you updated 12.5. So we're running a mid-2014 11,3 here. It is now on Mac OS Monterey 12.5. As you can see, we do not have any graphics acceleration running on this device right now so for example if we go open up Macintosh hard drive you can see there's definitely a delay here but the system still is running but we haven't caused the problem yet because you got to remember the 11 comma 3 is in this weird situation where the Nvidia card is activated on login so you have to boot into safe mode with shift and install the graphics acceleration packages on this particular model before you can do anything it's only 11 comma 3 that has this weird issue so now we're in safe mode we don't have any graphics acceleration going on here so we're going to go ahead and install the po post root volume patches because again you don't know that this is a problem so you just come in here you see though right away that there's a new update available now you can choose to ignore but that's why macola programmed this into here so you wouldn't go in here and just install this when there could be a problem. So look at this. If you clicked on view on GitHub, here's what's gonna happen. So we'll click on that. We'll give it a second for Safari to open up here. And there we go. If you would have clicked on that to look at this on GitHub, you would have saw this right away. And this could have prevented you from causing a problem. Again, I don't blame you for, for clicking ignore, but what we wanna do is like I mentioned earlier in this video, let's, let's create a new way of looking at the page first before we make the jump and that could possibly save us from problems in the future there might not be any problems for the next couple of days it might be totally fine or there might be a problem and then we can see it right here now that we know that let's just say that you click this anyway so let's do it let's click post install root patches here start root patching nvidia kepler password installing okay so the installation of the root volume patches has completed we'll get a pop-up here to be able to tell us for a reboot and we'll click on reboot and then we'll click on restart okay we're back at the login screen and let's log in and we can trigger the issue Now, right now, what happens when you trigger the issue, it's not an immediate crash. There's a anywhere between a 10 to 20 second delay where the system just freezes and doesn't do anything. And they will immediately kick you back to the login window with a window crash. And that's how you know that the issue is happening. Now, keep in mind, it all depends on what Mac you have. If you have a Mac that can switch, sometimes it can let you log in with the Intel GPU. But anytime you would use the discrete GPU or the NVIDIA GPU, you'll immediately cause a Windows Server crash and it will kick you back to the login window. Now, what are some of the things that could cause that? Certain apps that use a DGPU or if you just use an external display like like an HDMI monitor, that could immediately cause the switch. And there we are back at the login window. So now when we're in the state, we're in some pretty big trouble because you might think I'm locked on my system, right? Well, let's figure out a way to get back in. First of all, if you're using a monitor, 
all you need to do is disconnect the monitor. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to disconnect the HDMI monitor. And you can see that the screen immediately changed in, in display. So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller here. And now we're going to be able to log in because we are not using the NVIDIA card. There we are. So that's one way that you can possibly get back into your system. That does not say that the system won't crash when you use a certain app that will try to use the NVIDIA card. Most apps in here won't. For example, Safari is not doing that. Um, you can use different apps and those won't cause it, but some might. And if you do, you're going to be in, a, in kind of a, a bad situation. But let's just say that you're in a Mac that has only the NVIDIA card and you can't get in. Well, safe mode is going to be able to help you out here. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to switch over to image capture and we're going to boot up in safe mode. Okay, I plugged back in my monitor and I set it up to cause the issue and now we can restart. To boot the Mac into safe mode, all we need to do is hit restart. Wait until it hits the chime and immediately hold down the shift key. I like to hold down the left shift key, to, but it really doesn't really matter. Well, there's our chime. I've got the shift key held down now and we'll give it a second to boot back up. You can continue holding if you want to be sure that you're getting into safe mode. But usually after you see the progress bar, we're in safe mode. We can let go now. And look at that, we're in safe boot and this is our confirmation that that worked. And we should be able to log in here with no Windows Server crash. We're in. So now at this point, we can get to our data and do anything we need to do in the system. Now keep in mind, booting into safe mode doesn't load any launch daemons or anything. So automatic patching won't work and the graphics acceleration obviously is disabled when we boot into safe mode. So the system will be so, but at least you can back up your files here and do anything you need to do. I want to show you what will happen if we install 0.4.9 on the system to show you what will happen as a middle ground to help you with the situation. So let's fire up the Open Core Legacy Patcher application. In this example, we're using 0.4.5, and we should get the pop-up for 0.4.9 update. And there it is. Let's click on View on GitHub. And let's scroll down to get the asset. There it is. Now, what Makola did here, if we look at the patcher notes while we wait for that download, what he did was he prevents the installation of the Kepler acceleration graphics on these models to prevent you from getting locked out. So if you would have went to this page here and downloaded the new update and you would have tried to install it, it would actually prevented you from installing it to cause problems to your system. And it will install a basic frame buffer to give you at least a basic movability that's not super, super slow. So that's what we're going to do next. So now we got our download finished. Let's open up our applications folder here and drag our new 0.4.9 application to our applications folder and replace. Let's double click on it. Close our old app and we want to click open. Okay, we're on 0.4.9. Let's click on post install root patch and then it'll say NVIDIA Kepler and start root patching. Now we need to relaunch as admin. Password. All right. Now before we reboot, I'm going to click on ignore so I can look at the patch notes here. So let's scroll up and that's where we wanted to see right here. Installing pass, patch set NVIDIA Kepler kernel space. And this goes back to what Makola said right here in the patch notes for the change log. We click down, installs only the kernel space patches for 12.5 and newer. So we know that that worked and now we're ready for a restart. We'll click on return to main menu, but you will click on reboot and I'll close the patcher and restart the system. Okay, let's log in. All right, we're back on the desktop. Now again, we're running with basic frame buffer here, so it will be a little bit faster. It's definitely not gonna be as fast as using graphics acceleration with a full running system. Now that you're in this situation, what do you do? Well, 
you got two options. A could wait a little bit to see if a fix can be found, if you can tolerate running a system like this in this condition, or B, just do a full backup and erase and reinstall of macOS Monterey 12.4. And I know both of them sound like a huge pain, but again, this issue was dropped very late in beta. It was only picked up and this, everything was running fine in earlier betas and Apple changed something and caused a bunch of problems. If you're in this situation, again, I know the options don't sound good, but at least you can get back on 12.4 without back up and erase and reinstall or just hold out with running with 0.49 and the frame buffer to just run the system for now. So those are your two options if you get in that situation. If you have any questions about this, feel free to put them in the comments and I can give you a hand. Now let's talk about the 11.6.8 update for Mac OS Big Sur. The installation went just fine. There's no issues whatsoever that can be found right now. The update was small because Metal still works great and there's no patches that need to be installed. And I wanted to talk about that because if you didn't see, I have a updated Mac OS Big Sur on older Macs video that I put out because I still think that Big Sur is a option to do if you want full metal compatibility and graphics acceleration working natively without any patches from open core legacy patcher but i also did the mac os monterey update video to put in all the changes of open core legacy patcher into that so if you want to catch up on all the latest changes on either big sur or monterey check out those videos but again mac os big sur 11.6.8 works really great and no issues whatsoever now let's talk about Mac OS Ventura. There's still no support for Mac OS Ventura on Open Core Legacy Patcher. You might see other people trying to install it, but again, it is recommended not to try installing Mac OS Ventura until there is at least some support from Open Core Legacy Patcher, and it'll be right here on this page showing you that there is support for Ventura. So until you see that, don't attempt to install Ventura on your system. There's also a nice page here that shows all of the current support that is being worked on on Mac OS Ventura. So you want to check that out if you're curious to see all of the work the developers are working on right now to try to get Mac OS Ventura working on older Macs and even Max that Apple made, for example, the 2016 MacBook Pro that's not supported Mac OS Ventura. So really nice documentation here. And that's it for the OCLP 0.4.9 update. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If this video helped you, give it a thumbs up or a share. I'd really appreciate it. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, click on that subscribe button. And I want to thank all my viewers and especially all my Patreon members. You guys are absolutely awesome. And I really appreciate you. And we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.